and God said the Maxwell equations and there was light. Dr. Fizz here to derive the wave equation for the Maxwell equations and to show you that the mu naught epsilon sub naught can be replaced indeed by 1 over c squared. With these shirts be careful there are variations in this one here for example one of the E's is replaced by D. Physicists will do that in the general case where you have some material that's in the presence of the electric field and similarly with the magnetic field they'll use H when there's a magnetic field in the presence of some uh, physical material. Uh, here is the uh, shirt for the infant and the shirt for the infant has the form of the Maxwell equations just like we talked about it in class. Notice they like to put the E first and the B second. That's nice. Divergence of E, the divergence of B, and then the curl of E and the curl of B. So let's look at the equations in that form. Here they are. And we want to go into deep outer space where we're far away from any charges, far away from any currents, and see if we can support waves in the electric and magnetic fields. So this is nice. Rho becomes zero. J becomes zero. We have beautiful equations here with symmetry, which tells us a change in electric field creates a magnetic field, and a change in magnetic field creates an electric field. And this is the secret behind optics. Light will propagate itself in the vacuum without needing a medium because of these two laws. Let's see if these indeed lead to a wave equation. Well, if we're going to search for a wave equation, what we want to do is take a Maxwell equation and take a derivative with respect to time because we know the wave equation has a second derivative with respect to time. So we differentiate both sides of the equation. Since the differentiation order doesn't matter, we bring in the d dt to hit the b. And we want to get rid of the b. We want an equation with just e. So we go to the other Maxwell equation, del cross e is negative db dt and solve for db dt and then we're going to substitute that in to our equation. Uh, up here we have uh, db dt substitute the minus curl of e and then we write the right hand side down without any change and multiply both sides by minus one. So this is what we want to evaluate and hopefully out of this left hand side we get the second derivative of e with respect to um, say x uh, or you know y and z in a three-dimensional case and we get the wave equation. Let's see. Well we want to take our time here. We got a big thing to calculate here so let's just take the curl of E first before we take the curl of the curl. So here we set it up with the ij hat you know you know k, k hat arrangement and our components of the del operator, the derivatives and the components of E. So we go i hat is equal to the partial of EZ with respect to Y and then we flip them, the partial of EY with respect to Z with the minus sign. Then as we expand the determinant minus J and that's the partial of EZ with respect to X minus the partial of EX with respect to Z plus K hat gets these two here the derivative of EY with respect to X minus the derivative of EX with respect to Y well, after we get that, we want to do the curl of the curl. And to do the curl of the curl, well, we have to put the x component down in here, the y component down in here. Notice the minus sign will flip these. And the z component down here and do it again, the curl of the curl. Well, if we do that, we have here, let's look at the x component only, the i hat component, which works on these uh, pairs here. So that would be d, dy times this, slide it in here, no change, minus d, dz of this one, slide it in here. Now when we do that, we'll get the second derivative here of ey with respect to y and x minus the second derivative of E sub X with respect to Y, minus the second derivative of EX with respect to Z, plus the second derivative of EZ with respect to Z and X. And now here comes uh, the summary of all this. Uh, we simply have interchanged the order of differentiation here, these independent variables, put the X first, the Y second, and the x first and the y and the z second in that last case. So 
we write this uh, again. Uh, just simply come on down here and just uh, copy it uh, again or with this simple uh, rearrangement of terms to put the uh, second derivatives with respect to y and z last and have uh, the mixed derivatives uh, first and then notice I can write the d dx out of these parentheses and then have the de first derivative of y with respect to y and the first derivative of e z with respect to z. And these steps may not be obvious but then when you do theoretical physics you experiment uh, with the equations. See your laboratory is your math and you play around like this uh, just like experimentalists play around the lab to get something to work. So here we now use a trick by fooling around here that we say if we use this trick add this and subtract you know in other words add zero to, to this uh, right hand side then I get a nice nice completion in these two terms for example if I add this second derivative of e of x with respect to x then that will give me over here the missing piece, the missing dimension I didn't have before. And I have to subtract it. So here it is the subtraction, but that looks nice too because now I have one of each. I have XYZ, XYZ. That's a nice little trick. And once when we do that, we see that this result can be written as the derivative with respect to X, partial derivative of del dot E, and this is minus del squared of E sub X. Now we have derived here an important uh, powerful vector identity, a vector operator identity here that del cross of the quantity del cross e is equal to, if we want it, this is the x component, we have the y component and the z component in there also, this would be a vector identity where we have del, take the gradient of del dot e minus del squared E, vector, a vector form. But we're not going to need this, although you're going to use it for homework and do this derivation for the magnetic field really fast. I'm going to uh, look at this uh, here, the, continue along with what I have above. I have this relationship, this is very, very beautiful relationship now because del dot E in our Maxwell equations is zero. That is wonderful. That goes away for the uh, form of Gauss's law where there's no charge, where in way out, in outer space, outer space that there's no rho, and that brings us to then this nice vector equation if we uh, allow for the you know, other two components, and when we get this far, remember that's the left hand side of the equation that we had before, which was this one, and the minus sign will cancel, and here, wait a minute, this is a wave equation, and remember what hits the t squared down here is v squared, so it's 1 over v squared. That means this is 1 over c squared, because this is the speed of flight. They didn't, perhaps uh, you might say, they had to put the numbers in, but they put the numbers in for these electric and magnetic constants. Voila, you get the speed of light, something very, very close to the speed of light at that time, and that wave equation then you identify this with 1 over v squared all right, and that is the speed of light when you plug in these constants. This is a wonderful connection the laws of electricity and magnetism, these constants when you take the product and take the square root and the reciprocal you get the speed of light and then it all comes together very nicely for us you're going to uh, work for a homework with the magnetic field and show that the magnetic field, using that nice identity I derived, you'll be able to get this result rather quickly. Very beautiful result. The wave equation for the electric field, the wave equation for the magnetic field, and the speed of the waves, 1 over the square root of mu naught epsilon naught, that is the speed of light.